Paul Hetherington, and this is Palace in Wonderland. It's my latest uh, creation. It's kind of a statement on sustainability and consumerism. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it's around the base. There's all these uh, black and gray factories, and basically they're cutting into Wonderland. Uh, you know, the people in Wonderland are ordering all these consumer goods and living the life. You know, definitely a statement on our society <laughs> currently, and. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the king and the queen are actually up in the top, or close to the top, ordering a f another factory. And then down here, kind of by this gold flower, is a conveyor belt, which all the factories are connected to, and that's where the consumer goods are coming out. And there's kind of a hoarding situation going on on the bottom floor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then the rest of the inhabitants of Wonderland are basically partying, and there's a DJ booth, there's... Uh, all sorts of craziness going on. There's even a, uh, a bee, a girl in a bee suit, is trying to jump onto a, a big golden flower. And the bee is being chased by a dinosaur, which is, you know, kind of a statement on how bees are becoming extinct. Mm -hmm. uh, so a bit of a social statement. And then it really, at the end of the day, I just wanted to try and make a, a palace that would look really pleasing right. to the eye. Um, as you start at the bottom, it's all black and gray, and then as you work your way up to the top, uh, it gets more, more and more gold. Yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful build here with like with the way you were able to incorporate the, the colors and everything. Talk about some of the colors you used in this and, and how you laid those out and designed like the, you know, the floor patterns and the roofs. Right. Uh, well, it started out, uh, I love checkers, so there was the tan and brown checkers at the bottom, uh, and then it Basically, I found that uh, sand green, brown, and gold would be my, my base colors with a little bit of gray to kind of provide a neutral base. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's already pretty distracting to the eye, so the gray, the gray and the white kind of give you, a, kind of guide your eye a little bit on this one. Um, and then as I got higher up, I just added in more and more gold, uh, those little triangle pyramids mm -hmm. pieces, the one-by-ones, uh, really turned out to be a, a kind of a crucial piece in this build as well as a bionicle piece over the doorway. Uh, I, I'm not sure what bionicle set it's from, but uh, you use two of those, it makes a great gothic arch, and then I added in sort of a Ninjago kind of blade, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of looks like it's the same family or same style as, as that wing part. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just one of those little happy accidents where you're going through your parts and you find parts that, you know, I, I would just use to kind of go in the same family. Uh, which is just trial and error, trying to figure that type of stuff out. Mm -hmm. Then in the back, uh, there is this really cool Belleville um, kind of scene. It lo looks almost like a painting, and it's actually a, a road or a pathway that goes up to another castle. So I put the little drink me bottle in front of that, and it's kind of a nod to uh, Wonderland. Okay. You know that if you so maybe after the factories devour this place, there might be another way out. You know, drink the bottle and go to another <laughs> world. Uh, oh, and at, at the top, there is a spaceman uh, working on kind of like a steampunk um, spaceship. So he's got his little motor wrench. He's working on the motor. And it looks like similar style to the tower, but it's actually, he's planning his escape. You know, he's a bit like the, uh, what's the Tesla guy? Oh, Elon uh, Musk? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of an Elon <laughs> Musk sort of, hey, uh, this place might be doomed, but there's still hope, right? We're heading to somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. So it's... It's loaded with all sorts of little references like that, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, all, the, yeah, all sorts of good stuff. You got what well, over here on the left side. I think we haven't covered too much over on this side. So what do we kind of have going over here? Uh, this was just a, a pool scene. Um, one of the the things I was influenced by was uh, oh gosh, it, it's a palace in California that you can tour. Uh, of course, we're on camera, so I can't remember the name. Lady Gaga just did a video there. Um, but they had this really cool Roman pool, uh, so the, the styling cues kind of I took from that. But really, at the end of the day, I let the bricks kind of do the designing for me. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of trying different combinations and color combinations, and that's how I ended up with the color scheme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you can talk about some more of the minifigs, you've got all sorts of interesting minifigs in here. So talk about maybe some of your favorites or some of the way you, so you combine like minifig parts to create some of these. Uh, once again, just trial and error. I did that 
basically two days before. <laughs> you know, like, like you always kind of rush the minifigures. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, the main decision I made was to go with the flesh figures. Uh, I felt that the yellow just with the color scheme wouldn't have really worked. So the flesh kind of adds, they, they pop a little bit more. Uh, they're a little more challenging because I, I found I'm way less cool fleshy faces than the uh, yellow ones. Uh, but there's basically all sorts of party stuff going on, uh, just people mingling and everyone's got their wine glasses out. There's the DJ booth. There's the girl bugging the DJ. Or I don't know if she's either singing along or complaining about his song choices. And then over, well, you've got the kind of uh, Alice in Wonderland nod with the tea party. I do actually have Alice in Wonderland and the, uh, the Cheshire Cat there. And if you can see Alice's face, she's looking kind of unhappy. So she doesn't really know what to do in this case. She knows that Wonderland is probably not going to... It's in trouble, mm -hmm. and she's pretty sad about what to do about it. Uh, the one th final thing I'll point out, uh, which just turned out to be kind of cool, was I got a LEGO Universe, um, you know, one of those free panels that they used to hang out with the, with the dragon. Yeah. And funnily enough, I had built the dragon that's beside it about two months before I, I remembered I had that part. And as I was trying to figure out a scene for the dragon, at the very end, placing the minifigures, I had the painter, and I thought, when I pulled out that panel, I was like, oh my god, it, I actually built that dragon. It's kind of the same. They look the same. So it's the, the uh, dragon is getting his portrait painted. And that was kind of a fun little happy accident. And then there's just two jesters in front of them. One has an arrow, bow and arrow, and the other one has a bunch of broken eggs behind him and an egg on his head. So it's Wonderland. They're just doing silly stuff. You know, exactly. <laughs> so when, with the build of this size, what kind of planning do you do beforehand when you start, or is it pretty much just start building and kind of go from there? Really, I just went from there. I had a bunch of uh, inspirational pictures that I found on the Internet, uh, but I really had no idea what it was going to look like, even as I got up to the point where the the stairs, you know, the, the curved stairs happened in the little uh, 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 golden statues. You know, I had no idea what the building was going to look like. Uh, you just sort of take take some of the, the parts, and obviously I knew the color scheme mm -hmm. at that point, but uh, you, you just kind of riff on that, I guess. Uh, but starting out, no, I, I have no idea what it was going to look like. Yeah. yeah, you just work from there. Well, I, I think in the end it turned out really amazing here, so it's, it's a great build, and there's so much to look at. And I love kind of the, the story behind it there. So, yeah, thanks so much for bringing it to the show, and thanks for chatting with me.